What's good, YouTube? And welcome to the house. Boy, do we have a heck of a market watch for you guys today. My tabs are actually so loaded, I don't know what I'm clicking on at times, so bear with me if I, like, click on something and I'm like, okay, I need a little bit to process what I'm looking at. That being said, our first thing on today's market watch is Athernia. I brought you beforehand card games like Flesh and Blood very early on, and then Argent Saga. I think this is up there in terms of one that's really going to head up and out. Athernia has as their Kickstarter back. They had to cancel their first one as when they released it, the crush card happened to hit. They had tournaments planned, they were scheduling, they had everything ready, and then the world got put on pause. But they're back, and they're already fully funded here out the gate. You can use code WATSGA10 for 10% off any of their tiers. I actually have an affiliate link you can click and use too. It'll be first thing in the description. So after checkout, you've got to message them code WATSGA10 to get that 10% off. There's no intuitive way to use Kickstarter with that. But but you will get 10% off anything. This is, let me look at the creator's notes. He has a great head on his shoulders. He actually has plans to give back, and I'll say that as well in a bit. So this is an expandable card game, but how they plan to create their secondary market is through extra skins and through other rarities, and we've seen great success in certain card games. So basically, when you're buying this, you're ripping it open, you're getting everything in the set. They cut out the filler. They're not trying to have RNG and gambling, but you do get lowest rarity and then you get chances at higher rarities, extra skins, RNG within it as well, but not for the cards themselves. You get access to everything. They're also going to make it to where you can print sets ahead of time, actually cut them out and test with them and see, do I actually want to go ahead and purchase this in the future? It's really great how he looks out for the community. And speaking of that, a percentage of every purchase will be split between charity, supporting artist, as well as a prize pool. So they're looking at actually supporting artists artists that have like worked hard on this card game because there's so many different things that have actually gone through here and then they're also looking at raising prize pools for tournaments in the future directly through their product without a limit cap. They're trying to create and get back to the players. And seriously, go through here. The art is amazing. What they're creating is amazing. The actual mechanics look great. Everything about it's very unique in how they're presenting it. And you can go through their tiers as well. A lot of you guys actually have messaged me since then going, hey, uh, is, is that card game going to come back? I know they canceled the Kickstarter. I really want to look at it again. And here it is. Let's go ahead and get into your regularly scheduled Yu-Gi-Oh! Market Watch, starting with Witch of the Black Rose, which finally has an enabler that also sets up the deck for it. The Ultimate Rare has gone up in value for sure. The first edition towards 40 and the Unlimbs towards 30. There is a common of it that's still cheap out of a Legendary Duelist, and I think it's getting a reprint ahead as well, probably common again. The Ultras are still very affordable, though, if you have actual interest. First edition's under $3 here, multiple of them, and then the Unlimbs are also very affordable. So if you you think you're actually going to play this with its enabler that kind of puts it into the whole network where you could actually be playing it that is available but i don't know if the decks will actually be going that far 10 black rose has been almost completely bought out here we can see all everything's pretty much damaged one motivated seller low rated seller but out there grinding 13 dollars before there's not a single one and other versions of the black rose stuff definitely have been churning and people going through them as well blue rose dragon having a small buyout versus market price this has been targeted a lot i don't think it'll necessarily see play versus the other rose dragons but we'll see it's a, around ten dollars first edition at 10 as well before you see that it starts to go up and out in just two pages White Rose Dragon was suggested to me as something you maybe should consider. It is a hollow printing, and there's no guarantee the reprint in the Legendary Duelist Season 2, which will probably be heavily underordered for the set that it is uh, for being open, but I think it'll probably be common in that set. Well, like I said, have to wait and see. These super rares are probably going to be the only hollow version, but you're still speculating at this point versus rarities that could come to be. But if you want a hollow version of this card that is a very good card, it is cheap right now. For big Hidden Droplet is around $100, and people keep asking me how I feel about this versus Talents, or do I think it deserves its price point? Absolutely. When you have a phrase in Yu-Gi-Oh! that says, you can't respond, basically, that is insane power. And versus Reprint Clocks, I think that when we go through some of these things, Ignition Assault is the first set up for Reprint, and a ton of people seem to be forgetting that. So you then have Eternity Code and Rise of the Duelist. Yes, we're thirsty for reprints from them, but we don't know when that is 
is that could be trying to make battles of legend great again holding out for megatons and gold series we're gonna have to wait and see when we actually get reprints but ghosts from the past is hecka early and i would be shocked to see some reprints that early so for people spending the money that are kind of scared or skittish i do think it's an okay buy of course using that tcg player link in the description down below costing you nothing extra to support the channel directly for the cards you'd already be buying but uh it's a big boy purchase so i do get why you would be a little bit timid to slam cash down on them when a reprint could be on the horizon speaking of a set ahead of that eternity code access code talker is up towards 85 animador getting bought out almost completely again towards 60 with only seven listings left chamber dragon made getting bought out to ridiculous proportions eternity code that has revolving stunks and now the boxes are about a hundred dollars for sealed on eternity code as well the demand is just there for this set it's kind of crazy dragoonity we do know that there's reprints coming towards ghosts from the past people also forgetting that where's my dragoonity cards not in a structure deck t this time probably but with that we've seen rolling buyouts on stuff like dt ducks and other past popular ones i would think the synchros might be the smarter money in dt but i will say there are a ton of reprint slots slated for ghosts from the past and with dragoonity set to be in there i would think that konami's probably going to give a good amount of reprints towards ones that haven't had a ton so people swirling around cards like barka i i could see it getting a reprint but if it does get missed you've spent your money very well if it doesn't uh you should probably be flipping them right now ignister island speaking of the first setup i do have like this kind of feeling that ignition assault's going to get targeted and goes from the past we're seeing the printing of product and then the printing of product ahead support the past product with legend legendary duel season two just about to release suddenly we get a ton of plant support and it happens to be in legendary duel season two as well hmm so with the adding nister stuff coming over in lightning vortex we could be waiting all the way till say battles of legend just a month after but i do foresee that we will have reprints at a timely manner manner after lightning vortex for the tcg so people spending on stuff like this uh ridiculous rates honestly towards 17 18 again where they didn't learn their lesson the first time I get the hype. It looks a lot better. It looks like it's going to do something. Yes, yes, yes. We can do this. We can win. We can be more than rogue. Well, the Adagnisters do sure look a lot better with their new support, but people just turning out the money right now, I think you're going to get in that loop of, okay, it's going to go down and then it's going to go up. Ah, there's a reprint announcement. It's almost definitely, no matter what, the Megatons have, you know, they'll be over towards August, but you have so many other sets to dodge versus your reprint announcements versus your time to actually sell this so interesting how people are going in i think the true winners are the ones who ended up getting any kind of sales rates towards 17 right around now uh so the other agonisters are up in price among this excitement uh a chi chi of course atop again and then picari people making them sales and listing them very happily hoping that somebody will buy link spider has seen more meta play and i was just like mm, i've seen this a lot more on dueling but i'll check it up and the ultimate rare has been back up above 30 there's very few uh super rares for what it actually is and then only one common so this is a well two commons one's out of a demo pack that's extremely hard to get but with that i would think that there's not much accessibility to this card you actually maybe should have your copies sooner than later if you think you'll have any interest in playing this or a reason to within your deck should all shizm back to ridiculous proportions we saw at 27 dollars on live stream and it is cool no no never mind we have no coolant versus 27 for the most part i spoke kind of seeing prices without shipping so we i thought we had motivated sellers but yeah it's around 28 it's very stable there's a lot of shadol hype right now <coughs> people still love summoning winda and going crazy with stuff like that so uh yeah this card is up in price and it's causing other kind of weird things to happen like quintent magician quintet i i told you i'm gonna stumble through this market watch quintet magician up towards ten dollars one of my people that come into the live streams was telling me yeah i've been selling these at 11s pretty consistently which is above market price that's what feedback will do for you sometimes man crazy the things going on here also speaking of looking to the past lob format yeehaw so simo has probably dumped a little fuel on the fire people looking at past formats or past cards wall of illusion the super rares crazy ridiculous prices above 20 dollars 
the DT is also there, and this is pretty much just the very old LOB, maybe MRD formats that you're going to be playing these in, and we see the DTs up towards 1820. DT4, if you recall, went on clearance and has a ton of big winners, yet there doesn't seem to pe be people that have uh, held on the quantities too much for this, these, and big winners such as Trishula, if you bought these on clearance, Drac Aeolo, Sparcha, like so many huge winners over time within the set, Trap Dust Shoot, so... Wall of Illusion, it's money if you bought DT4 on clearance way back when and you got a stack of them. Might be a great time to list it and hope for some sales. Mech Chaser only has one holo besides its tournament pack forms. And I was noticing that the uh, first editions have been going. We have one here at 7, another seller, and then at 8. So only three sellers with first heads, which are actually newer because it pretty much blipped off for a little bit. People taking those past formats really seriously, it feels like. Plunder Patrol Lease from Eternity Code is up, and the other Plunder Patrol Ultra Rares are up even more, it feels like, from Ignition Assault. This is one of the newer cards, but one of the best cards. So, yeah, this has been pretty stable towards 7 slash 8. Ojama Tokens, this is just a piece of history where people might have some money and they didn't know they have money. The Super Rares from the Battle City tournaments back in the day, they're really up there. They're really high and in demand, and even the regular Ojama Tokens are kind of up there dark magician and other dark magician so this is the jump version other versions of this dark magician okay i should rephrase i know i'm gonna stumble through here this version of dark magician is far up and out way past what i would expect other versions of dark magician because this is the only version of this version of dark magician other versions have also been going up and are worth a look through the market to see what's happening at, with them 84 dollars for a jump dark magician who would have ever seen thought they'd seen the day when these used to go for five dollars just consistently way back when Sky Calvary Centuria is way up as people have been looking at the new Paleo link and going back towards Link 2s. We'll go through other Paleos throughout the market. Well, not Paleos, but Frog support throughout this market. Watch. The God cards, uh, interestingly, have a lot of different versions that people don't know about, such as the YMA, which is the movie Annie Manga promo. And this secret rare... I've had people in stream randomly notice they had one and then notice they had a lot more money than they thought as the GB1 versions have been spiking. These have been getting rolling buyouts and been spiking. Might be worth listing them or keeping it even longer as it's one of the most iconic god card arts in secret rare. But we've seen the OCG getting cool rarities now on the god cards and this art could keep coming out. It's really up to you and how you view it because this is like second fiddle to GB1, but it's a good second fiddle that has always been kind of hard to get. Ten Sidra. This is like a little moment that makes Child John happy. Ten Sidra has been bought out. I remember when the tens came out and people with super rares were very salty. They had $50 ones to $30 ones and they went and looked like, oh, well, that version's worse. It's the ten version. Dude, this version has always looked way more badass to me. Only the ultimate rare was trumping it back in the day in my book and I didn't get why people were like treating it like it was Tenzo where, oh, it's a secret rare. Well, yeah, that's also a secret rare. That's kind of cool. As a kid i didn't understand this stuff and it looks like some of that nostalgia has paid off we see one near mint around 20 as a motivated seller and then 28 and 31 revolving buyouts have been happening on cyber dragon stuff again the dr4 version bought out to freaking 200 dollars kind of crazy for something that used to get left behind and nobody cared about and it was 12 dollars forever things that were less desired back in the day they keep going up and surpassing expectations. IP Masquerada is hitting higher prices for the Ultra Rare near 13, the Secret Rare near 12. I'm seeing this played more in Drytrons and other decks uh, within the metagame again. So, a lot of people leaning towards it might be prudent to go ahead and get a Secret Rare one, in my opinion. All right, we're going to see what this tab even is. Ah, Eternity Code 2. That's uh, excess tabs. Spell Power Mastery got a buyout. Pendulum screaming from the rooftops as we are heading towards a lot more Pendulum cards being released. And we see uh, first ed here at $2 motivated seller. And then around 4 and then 5 slash 6 quickly. There were almost no copies at one point on the market last week. Necroface getting a weird buyout for the super rares. After the buyout happened, we were literally on stream for hours where they're just on troll and toad where you can use code what's good five for five percent off they're seven dollars forever and then finally those sold out after literally there was there's a buyout group on facebook and i look in the comments at people there and i'm like hey anyone want to get these with code what's good five it took literally two whole days for them to get off of troll and toad but random necroface buyout whenever you're back in the day 
You're round six of regionals. You're about to face somebody and you sense a dark presence and aura and then you find out they're a necro face player and they've somehow gotten to four and one and you're playing them late, you know you're not safe. That's about it. It's nostalgia slash still a really insane card for the mechanic that it is. Gold Sark to three would probably shoot this to the moon. I don't get why people are going for this right now. Maybe long stretch, the new pot card banishes more card, banish cards go burr. I don't know why people are doing it. Heretic Seal of Heavenly Spheres never got a reprint, getting really up there in price. It's not, you know, you have the new Rose cards, which will probably play it. There's Dragon Link still on the outside looking in. Plenty of decks still want to play their dragons and use this card, and it's been going up and out of copies on the market. Get Your Game On is a World Championship promo from back in the day, a common actually, but is a piece of hero support. Only one listing at 600. It's kind of one of those things, again, where you could have the money you could be saying, and you just can't find them and then they pop up at ridiculous new prices i think i only have one of these myself ronan toden uh going up and shooting up in price i think it was like a low of 20 or something crazy for a near mint at one point now they're coming down at 10 this is still absurd first adds at 10 anyone who wants to be sane and sell them list yours unless you plan to play the deck uh so dupe frog pulling a similar hop up in price and the super rares going crazy as well well and to round out this market watch wow i'm actually under 20 minutes we have the fanatic listings up finally for the gold blue eyes dark magician and red eyes similar to those metal god cards they will be on tier zero later i know they're getting stock where you can use code what's good five and get a better price and get it shipped to you completely for free later on uh so fanatic not the only person carrying these and uh i would kind of wait for tier zero but if you got that itch you gotta order it now you gotta get it they have both the steel which will be limited to ten thousand, and these which will be limited to five thousand. and i'm pretty sure tier zero still has the golden god cards in stock with code what's good five free shipping when you're ordering all three i'm pretty sure in that price threshold but yeah so the god cards have been selling out for a while they're ridiculous getting priced on ebay up and up and up if you look so i would consider maybe sooner than later dark magician girl always tends to sell i know there's like a stainless steel one that's ridiculously priced in japan which is limited ten thousand. this is limited five thousand it's not a one for one comparison it's not of the actual card but people do love their dark magician girl collections i could see something wonky happening with this and almost every blue eyes collectible tends to 2x or 3x in price over time after if it it's off the market so yeah get to the cards get to the cards hey it's metal gold cards sticking with it thanks for watching today's market watch please subscribe if you haven't already as my brain is kind of just going out of body at this point uh i would appreciate it and like this video if you enjoy the the conversation and let me know what you think of everything going on i have a couple more things it's been a long day for me i've gone several places got my oil change done a lot of stuff and we're just here at four o'clock it's gonna be a longer day for me thanks for watching everybody